right over there. Well, in today's video, we're going to start doing something that I'm a little bit overdue with starting. We're going to start taking a look at some PinePhone operating systems. And to start us off with that, we're going to be taking a look at one of my personal favorite mobile Linux distributions, Ubuntu Touch. And we're going to be doing that right now on the Linux Lounge. So indeed, as I said during the opening to this video, we're going to be taking a look at Ubuntu Touch on the Pine phone. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the GitLab page because there's some interesting information contained on this page. Now if we go down, as you can see, it's a build for the Pine phone and Pine tab. So you can use Ubuntu Touch on the Pine tab as well as the Pine phone. If we keep scrolling, you, you know, you can see how to install it. It's pretty standard for a Pine phone operating system. And if we keep scrolling, we can see what we really want to see here. What works and what doesn't work. Now, sadly, Ubuntu Touch for the PinePhone is a little bit far behind as far as PinePhone operating systems are concerned. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that they have got working and it's really impressive. So kind of all the basics work. You know, you can make SMS messages, you can make calls, all that sort of stuff. Uh, your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi will work, but they're a little bit buggy. But then you've got kind of quite a long list of things that don't work, frustratingly. So, for instance, the torchlight doesn't work. You're not going to be able to take photos or video. The audio routings for calls like, probably aren't going to work. You can't make MMS messages. The video acceleration doesn't work, so everything's a little bit slow. Your GPS doesn't work, so you're not going to be able to use maps. And apparently earphones and the microphone do not work which that's a little bit frustrating too. Now, I'm going to probably say, take all of this with a grain of salt, because a lot of stuff that apparently isn't working, kind of works. Now, I've gone ahead and installed the new release candidate, so apparently the audio routings is now working. And also, I did open up the camera and I was able to take a photo, but the viewfinder was so slow, it's probably unusable, so that's probably why it's listed as not working. So... As the Ubuntu Touch team say, the Pine phone is probably not your daily driver yet, but let's go ahead and move over to the Pine phone and see where they're at. And indeed, here we are back at the Pine phone. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what Ubuntu Touch has. So here's the lock screen. As you can see, it took a little bit to get to the lock screen. Now I should probably warn you before we start this review that this is running from a micro SD card. So Potentially, if you install this to the internal EMMC, it would be quicker. But I also have to say that a lot of the slowness is probably caused by the Pine phone itself and the kind of the underdeveloped nature of the operating system so far. So, for instance, as we saw previously, the Pine phone does not yet have GPU acceleration, so that's going to slow it down a lot as well. But let's go ahead and unlock it, and as you can see, we've accidentally opened the phone app at some point. So let's kind of just see what you get. Now, as you can see, we are on a home screen that looks very, very much like the old school Ubuntu Unity, which effectively, that's what it is. This is Unity 8, which was recently rebranded as Lomiri, I believe. Now, this operating system is quite conventional as far as mobile Linux is concerned. And I can see this being like quite a popular choice with people who just kind of want a phone that just works and is going to have lots of mobile operating system apps that are developed, like, kind of designed just for mobile. I also think that Ubuntu Touch gets around a lot of the complexities that running mobile Linux can introduce. So for instance, this doesn't update like a traditional Linux distribution. This updates far more like a regular smartphone whereby you'll get regular over the air updates. So, all in all, Ubuntu Touch is quite a simple option that's very easy to use. And I've got to say, as far as mobile Linux is concerned, it's actually probably my favorite. It's like highly, you know, mobile optimized while still being free and open source. Now, Sailfish OS is more premium, but it's not open source. So I think this is going to be a good choice for a lot of people. Now, with that said, let's start going ahead and having a look at what you get on Ubuntu Touch and how well it all runs. So let's just go ahead and open the dash and take it from the top if the camera will focus. Here we go, from the top you've got a calculator, a calendar, a camera, a clock, contacts, external drive, file manager, gallery, media player, messaging, the Morph web browser, music, notes, open store, phone, system settings, terminal, UB ports, and weather. So this distribution is 
pretty light. You know, you don't get a lot of bloat and other junk with it. You just kind of get the stuff that you need and then they leave you to it to put whatever else you want on it. So let's just kind of have a look at some stuff. So first let's just take a look at the calculator because why not? It'll kind of give you an idea of like how long simple apps can take to launch. So as you can see, it is running from a internal SD card, but that did take a second to launch. But there you go, you've got a standard calculator. And this is where I can demo something that's actually quite cool, the Ubuntu Touch UI. So there's no buttons on the screen or anything, it's all swipe based. So if I swipe in from the right, you can see you get a list of open apps. I'm gonna tap that, goes back. If I swipe in from the left, you can see we've got the dash. And if you swipe in even harder, you get all of your available apps. Now, as you can see, something that annoyed quite a lot of people is there is no home screen. If you want to go back to your wallpaper, you kind of have to close everything, which um, the Lomiri desktop did actually used to have a home screen. I actually like that better to this, but I suppose a lot of people are going to find this just more efficient, and there was a reason why they removed the home screen. If we swipe in from the top, you can see that we've got a sort of a notification drawer style thing. And I've got to say, I actually like this better to the notification drawers of Android and iOS. As you can see up top, there's a list of things. So you know, you've got notifications, rotation, keyboard layout, files, location, Bluetooth, your network, sound, battery, date and time, and system. And you can tap these and it will basically give you more options for that particular thing. So I kind of see this as being a bit of a mixture between a notification drawer that you might get on sort of your iOS and Android and the control center that you get on iOS. And I've got to say, it's a really good compromise. It's really, really nice. So with that said, let's keep looking at some stuff that you get with Ubuntu Touch. You get a calendar. It's a pretty standard calendar. You get a camera. So I should probably show you this. It unfortunately kind of doesn't work. So it takes a while to load, but eventually, it should load up and let us take a picture. And this is probably going to take a while, but there you go. Now, as you can see, the viewfinder there is just terribly slow, but as you can see, it does in fact see my desk. So let's just go ahead and take a photo. And as you can see, it will tell us to swipe left for the photo roll. So if we do that, it did in fact take a photo. So Ubuntu Touch is capable of taking photos, the viewfinder just needs to be a lot faster as it is in other distributions. So let's just go ahead and close out of that. And if we keep going, you get a clock. Now, I don't actually know if the alarm works or not, but I certainly wouldn't depend on this for anything important. Uh, you get contacts, which is a pretty nice contacts uh, application, and it does support importing vCard files. That's important to note because a lot of distributions and desktop environments and contacts apps actually don't. And it really annoyed me that GNOME, or Fosh as it's called, doesn't support the like, importing files. You get external drives, so if you connect to micro SD card, you can manage it there. And we have a crash. Oh, it's back. There we go. Like I say, the Pine phone is an unstable kind of thing. Uh, it's not ready for daily driving yet. You get a file manager, which as you can see, all the apps that are bundled here are totally mobile optimized, which I think is going to be a big selling point for this particular operating system. So let's just go ahead and close out of that and keep going. And you get a gallery app, which is a gallery app. As you can see, you've kind of, uh, for some reason the image previews don't work, but if we tap on it, it will show it. So there you go, you can view photos in there. And if we keep going, you've got a media player. I don't actually know if this will play video, but I assume it will. You've got a messaging app, which supposedly calls and texts do work, but I've not actually tried it yet. Uh, you get the Morph web browser, which this is actually probably one of the best web browsers on mobile Linux. It's really fast, it's quite smooth, and it's got a fully phone optimized UI. So as you can see, we've got a page that's loading now, and it's DuckDuckGo. And as you can probably see, it's scrolling pretty smoothly, actually. Like, that's really smooth. The page is rendering, well, it's a little bit glitchy, but... It is smooth, and I think one day this is going to be a great option for a web browser. So if we just go ahead and close out of that and keep going, you've got a music app, so you can like you know play music and stuff. It's actually a pretty nice looking music app, but I don't have any music installed to show you with. So let's just go ahead and close out of that. And if we keep going, you've got a notes app, which fantastic. And next up, we have actually the Open Store. 
Now, this is pretty impressive. Effectively, what this is, is it's a store filled with mostly free and open source apps that are all mobile optimized. So if we go through it, you know, you can see you've got stuff like a Maps application. You've got stuff like um, a Telegram client down here. So for demonstration's sake, let's just go ahead and install it. And as you can see, it really is as simple as just hitting install and letting it do its thing. So this is why I kind of say that I think people who want something that just works are probably going to go with Ubuntu Touch because it's really, really simple and just works. So it might take a little second to install because it's running off a micro SD card, but eventually it should install and give us teleport. So let's just go ahead and open that. And as you can see, that's a completely mobile optimized app that we just installed, which is part of why I really like Ubuntu Touch. Now, if we keep going, we can see the teleport app that we installed has been added to this dash menu. You also get a full terminal, more or less. Now, Ubuntu Touch is a little bit controversial because it kind of locks down the system a little bit, which means that, you know, you can't install like traditional Ubuntu packages. Well, not easily anyway. You can set up a sort of a containerized Ubuntu and then install the packages from there. Well, like by default, you can't really do things like that. And I think much of the file system is read only too, which is great for kind of, you know, your security and stuff. But like, if you want to start tinkering, it's a little bit annoying. Um, you do have root access by default though, I believe. So it's kind of, it's not like Android where it's completely locked down. And from here you can, you know, set some various different things up. You can install Anbox, you can do all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool that you get a full terminal. Now just to demonstrate, let's try running a terminal command and let's run top. So as you can see, you can run uh, full Linux command line apps from this terminal. So let's just go ahead and close out of all those and you can see all of your apps open in a pretty nice kind of layout. So if we keep going, you've got the UB port app, which effectively will, um, well, it will essentially tell you where you can go for help with UB ports and give you a bit of an introduction to the operating system. So let's just go ahead and close out of that. And then if we keep going, finally, you've got the weather app. Now, I feel absolutely confident on opening this because I know that it's probably not going to be able to find my location. And that's because the GPS and stuff does not yet work on Ubuntu Touch. And as you can see, it cannot determine your location. But it is a good weather app. I've used it on my Nexus 5 running Ubuntu Touch. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That is Ubuntu Touch running on the Pine phone. As you can see, it's really not there yet. It's a little bit slow still. Some apps from the Open Store actually don't work on the Pine phone yet. Um, so your, all your hardware is not going to work. Some of your software isn't going to work. It's kind of not that great at the moment, but what I will say is this is definitely one of the most polished Pine Phone operating systems. And I think once more of the hardware is enabled, this is going to be an absolutely fantastic option for mobile Linux. It really is a fantastic operating system, and even now it's very impressive. It's just not great as a daily driver. So if you want to run Ubuntu Touch, and I do actually run Ubuntu Touch, it's my daily driver. I would say get yourself one of these, a Nexus 5. This has Ubuntu Touch on it. It's not charged at the moment, so I can't show you that it does. Um, but the experience of running Ubuntu Touch is immeasurably, ple like, despite its age, is immeasurably better on the Nexus 5 than on the Pine phone at the moment. So if you just want to run Ubuntu Touch, get yourself one of these. Um, but with that said, if you want to tinker around with the Pine phone, well, Ubuntu Touch could be a great option to do that tinkering and give it a few months or so. And I think Ubuntu Touch is going to be a fantastic, maybe even daily drivable option for running Ubuntu Touch. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.